I was going to show you how to draw uh, your probe setup in Nears Toolbox. So this is basically how to, uh, let's say you're publishing a paper, putting a post together, and you want to explain where your probes are located on the head. This will allow you to do so. Uh, the Toolbox allows you allows to do many different things through this, through the um, probe aspect of the uh, raw variable. So when you load in your your nearest data usually loaded into a, a variable called raw. Within that, there's actually a probe uh, sub variable, if you want to call it. So this, this probe variable is different depending on what load function you use. If you're using a near X system, you typically have two options on how to load your data in. This can be either the load near X function or the load dot nearest function. These are actually a little different depending on which you load in. And this is strictly because with near X data, you automatically have uh, an atlas and atlas information. So you, when plotting on a three-dimensional atlas, it's already registered there. Uh, so it automatically embeds this in. You have all the information needed, and it's, it's quite straightforward. Uh, that's specifically if you're using the load near X function, and within that, you've actually used near site or something similar to actually create, create the probe initially. Uh, usually this is done well before the acquisition of the data. If you use the load.nears format, which would be also available to if you had a Nearx device, but if you also had a, an alternative device, say Artinus or Shimadzu or Hitachi or something like that, you can often use the .nears format, which is kind of becoming more or less the standard of the FNears world. Uh, if you notice, there's several um, differences between the load Nearx function and the load.nears function. And again, keep in mind this is this is uh, assuming that the load nearx uh, function in your raw data, you actually had a probe info file automatically there. So you'll see optodes registered, brain depth, optical properties, default draw function, which is actually what we're gonna talk about today. Head circumference, AP, which is I believe interior, posterior arc length. So the arc that goes that way, left to right arc that goes that way. Um, and then following that, finally, you have the same information going from optodes down. Uh, as the load.nears function. Uh, no matter which function you use, you will have a function called draw, which means if you say raw.probe.draw, it will actually do something. Uh, depending on which function is used um, and whether or not specific anatomy is present, it, you'll have different options. Uh, these options are as follows. And I won't go through, uh, we will actually show each one of these, but I won't read them off for you. But of course, you can pause it and, and go through this if you like. So these are each of the options you have as far as the draw, draw function goes. And specifically, in order to call these, you're going to use the default draw function. The default draw function is a um, property of the raw.probe variable. And you can see it right here. So in order to call it, you'd say raw, raw being your, your data you loaded in, dot probe, dot default draw function equals. Uh, then you'd actually state one of these in uh, a string format. So if a registered atlas is not present, you actually won't be able to call the default draw function. And the easy way to do that is you can say raw.probe dot and then start typing D, E, and hit tab and see if anything comes up. If it doesn't come up, it's likely that you actually don't have an atlas there. So it is possible to fix this. Uh, if you don't have it, uh, you can actually load in uh, registered points into the probe, uh, but I'm not going to cover that here. I'll hopefully have another video on that in the near future. So if you call just raw.probe.draw, you'll get something like this. Uh, this is if, the, the probe that I have here is a left hemisphere, right hemisphere, and it's a motor region. So you can picture a nose at the front, the ear, left ear on the left, right ear on the right, back of the head near the back. So uh, this would be automatically what's gonna, what's gonna pop up if you call raw.probe.draw. But let's say we wanna get a little bit more intricate than that. Well, you can select the 1020 option, which would be raw.probe.default draw function, and you write in 10 20 in parentheses, uh, apostrophes, excuse me. Uh, and then you go ahead and, and, and draw it, raw.probe.draw. You get something like this, and you get this kind of, kind of looks like a shrimp to me, uh, where you have little black eyes near the nose, you have the EEG coordinates, uh, 1020 coordinates, and then you have the probe laid out. You can see it's not perfect uh, on that. But, but it's within region, re, within reason. This gives you a basic uh, understanding of the probe on the head in the 1020 space. You can also use 1020 
zoom, which I assume is supposed to zoom in on the probe, but I actually didn't see any, any difference between the two. So it doesn't seem to be too functional so far. Uh, of course, it's probably a little simple swap in the code. So if, if, uh, if this comes to light and it's, it's useful, it might be easy to fix. Uh, there's also the 1020 map. The map seems to cover really what the region that you're covering. So you'll notice the, uh, the general uh, region underneath the probe that you're getting. It also uh, states red being sources and blue being detectors. You actually get a little bit more uh, discrimination there. You can also use the 1020 map zoom, and you'll notice now we're actually zoomed in on the probe. You see the region and only that. So it may, may be worth, maybe of interest if you're trying to actually show that in more detail. There's a 3D option, which takes the original probe and it seems to actually warp it a little bit in three dimensional space. But in my opinion, maybe not the most useful uh, variation of the tool. What's a little more interesting is the 3D mesh. Now you can actually overlay this onto a head and you'll see the 1020 points uh, registered. You can actually set fiducials on this and you can turn those black dots off if you wanted. Again, I won't cover that, but that is an option here. But again, you'll see I'm just as a raw dot probe dot default draw function equals 3D mesh and you get this lovely head. There's the next probes that pop up are gonna be variations of the same probe just at different views and what's, what's uh, probably unimportant to use the different views because you can actually rotate the head on the MATLAB uh, figure. So it's really not that useful to use these other ones, but it's a little bit more direct if you wanted one, one area or the other. So first is frontal. You'll see I call 3D mesh frontal, all in parentheses, and you get a frontal view of the head. Then you can do left where you get a left view of the head. You can do right, you get a right view of the head superior and top, which are quite similar, uh, posterior, occipital, which are quite similar, similar, and you can do back again, quite similar, interior, no real change. Bottom is probably interesting, but I can't think of what would be the most useful here. But again, it just, these, these uh, variations just give you a direct default to a certain view. So instead of having to try to figure it out or get it just right, you can just jump to it and maybe, maybe manipulate it there. And then you have the 3D ball. The 3D ball then, uh, as you, you'll notice with these, if we back up, you don't know which is source and which is detector, you just see the channels. Whereas if we do 3D ball, you actually start to see red and blue dots. And these can actually be specified as source is red, blue is detector, and now you have a little bit more information there. Uh, and then finally, the last option you have is 2D. But if you recall, when we first wrote raw.probe.draw without specifying the default draw function, we got this output. So the default draw function, if you don't specify it, is two-dimensional. Uh, very little information, but it does give you the rough idea of where everything is. It does have labels on it. You see S1, S2, S3, S4, D1, D2, et cetera. So this is very simple, very straightforward, how you would actually go to draw the probe in the nearest toolbox. There, you can do a lot more than this, but this is straightforward, gets you off and running, gets you the probe uh, drawn up, and probably gets you pretty useful uh, images for any sort of pu uh, publication or poster. I hope this was helpful, and I'll have a few more videos up soon.